Antibiotic resistance. So I've been talking a lot about antibiotics and how they work. Well, now I want to talk about antibiotic resistance and how that actually occurs. First of all, this is one way we can measure antibiotic resistance. So on the left is a Petri dish where bacteria have been spread all over the plate. On each of these little white dots, there are little filter papers that contain a different antibiotic. So in the clear zones around those filters, the bacteria haven't grown or they died. And the cloudy parts are where there's still bacteria. So this strain is sensitive to all these antibiotics. On this side, though, is the same species, but it's a multi-drug resistant version. Here you can see that at least two of these antibiotics, there's no sensitivity at all. And for two others, there's less than there was on the original. So this is one way in practice we can measure antibiotic resistance. So as far as mechanisms of antibiotic resistance, uh, it can be complex. But on the left side here, is shown all the targets for antibiotic resistance or antibiotics that I've already described. On the right side are the antibiotic resistance mechanisms. And there are four of them, and I'm going to talk about each of them. We have efflux, immunity and bypass, target modification, and inactivating enzymes. I'm going to start with inactivating enzymes. So last week, I told you about penicillin. And if you remember, this is the chemical structure of penicillin. What I think what I, you should remember is this little square I pointed out. And that is the beta-lactam ring. This is the same in penicillin, which is the first generation of penicillins, or beta-lactams. And then this is second and third generation, so these are modifications of the basic structure, structure, which are called cephalosporins. So the main way in which resistance to these drugs occurs is by an enzyme that inactivates it. And it does so in a fairly straightforward way. Here is the penicillin. This enzyme called beta-lactamase simply cuts that ring. It cuts between the two bonds of that ring here and opens it up. Afterward, there's a rearrangement of the structure, but that doesn't matter. At this point, it's inactive. So the way resistance occurs is simply by producing an enzyme, chops up the antibiotic, all gone. All right. So as I indicated, there are different types of penicillins or beta-lactams. The first generation was penicillin, and then you had cephalosporins. ESBL strains stand for extended spectrum beta-lactamases. These are bacteria that produce an enzyme that target both penicillins but also the second and third generation of beta-lactams, cephalosporins. ESBL is one of the biggest problems now and a rapidly growing problem. Here, for example, is a map of Europe showing the resistance of Klebsiella pneumoniae, one particular bacteria, to the third generation cephalosporins. This is data from 2017. You can go to this website called ECDC if you want to play with maps and get depressed. Uh, you can't see the numbers here, but I'll tell you what they are. Red is bad. Green is good. So in uh, Greece and Southern Europe, you have numbers like, I can't even see those, 50 to 75% resistant of this bacteria being resistant to cephalosporins, so ESBL. In Sweden, it's between 1 and 5% now. Another bacteria that's very common is E. coli. This map doesn't look quite as bad, 
But you can see again, in Southern Europe, in Italy, you have a huge problem with ESBL in E. coli. Again, Sweden is looking pretty good. This is 2017. The scary thing here, and this is all orangish, so it's like 10 to 20% in the middle here, uh, Spain and up to Germany. The really scary thing is if you compare this picture with just 12 years ago, it looks like this. So this is 2005, and here you should be able to see everything is green except a couple of countries. So very rapidly, you went from this to this, which gives you an indication of how quickly this problem is spreading. In addition, so once you get to cephalosporins, there is now further generations of beta-lactams, specifically one called carbapenem, which again, you can see the square ring. This is a relatively new antibiotic used if you have an ESBL bacterial infection. And already, resistance is terrible in Southern Europe, in Italy and Greece in particular. Whereas, again, in Sweden, it is not so bad. So these infections could be resistant to everything. You will hear much more later when we get to politics and things like that. Um, I think, and some next week. So that is reality, unfortunately.